Okay. So, welcome back to Chapter 5, and we're still talking about uh, resources like coal. So let's talk a little bit more about coal production, right? So, for most of American history, coal was mined in areas like West Virginia, mountainous areas where you would dig into the mountain and get the coal. That's the most traditional image we have of coal, right? These very deep mines where they go down with the hats, with the light on it. Very dangerous and very expensive. But there's been a really large increase. In fact, we are one of the largest producers of coal now due to this use of shallow mining, specialized equipment, where we basically just peel away the top of the earth and take away the coal, as opposed to digging down. Um, it's a lot more work to remove the top of the, of the mountain, in a sense, or strip away the top couple hundred layers of dirt. But machines like these huge cranes, and to give you a sense of size, look at this truck closely. Those are stairs going up the front to where the driver sits. These wheels are 8 to 10 feet tall. Huge equipment. Actually makes it a little bit more inexpensive to mine coal. Now, why do we still use coal in this country? Well, most of the coal that we use is for electricity. We burn coal to create electricity. Almost all of our electricity actually is still created by burning coal. Okay, We have seen a decline in production of coal in this country, mainly because... There are cheaper sources available. Australia has coal that is easier to mine. Okay. Another thing is that the Chinese economy was one of the largest uh, users of coal. Uh, their economy has now become the second biggest, so their factories are powered by coal. And they do mine a lot, but they were importing it from us as well. As their economy has slowed down, so has their desire to buy coal. And that's an important thing to note, that resources are only worth getting out of the ground if you can make a profit from it. This coal that you see in this picture in Montana has been here for a long time. We've known about it. But until we developed the machinery to make it affordable and there was a demand for it, you could sell it, it wasn't going to be mined. So, for instance, if this coal, if you can sell it for 30 bucks a pound, but it costs you $35 a pound to get it out, you're not going to do it. If the coal is 30 bucks a pound and you get 25 bucks a pound, maybe. Right, so it all depends. Is it worth it? And there are definite problems with burning coal. When you burn coal, that smoke or soot has lots of pollutants. One of the things that releases is carbon, which is one of the main things causing climate change. In fact, we can also see on this next slide a steadily increasing amount of carbon in the atmosphere. This is called the Keeling curve. And this is a series of measurements right here that measures the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They started taking samples in the late 50s, and you can see that it goes basically steadily up. Okay? So with coal, obviously we have the economic benefits of electricity, but what are some of the issues? We also have environmental destruction. When you mine for coal, when you surface mine, when you strip away the top of the mountain or the top layer of dirt, all the plants and vegetation there are gone. Using all those really big machinery, those big, huge trucks and cranes, they make a lot of pollution as well. Mountaintop removal is a kind of a scary term. It's how they mine coal now, and it leads to an, a really huge damage to the ecosystem. Now, supposedly, they're supposed to reclaim these old areas, but they don't. Because here is what happens when they take away the top of the mountain to mine coal, and they've taken all the coal out of the ground, and they leave this. They're supposed to go back and replant the trees so it looks like it did before. Fortunately, that was the case. Another issue with coal is the pollution and the damage to the environment. It not only damages the environment, it also damages people who live in the environment. And all of these issues, the damage caused to the environment, the damage caused to people's health, is often pitted against this idea that coal can also power electrical plants. If you're going to build a factory and you want to use coal, you're going to create environmental, you know, economic growth, but at what cost? And there's always this kind of tension that if we are too careful with how we use resources, that we're going to stifle our environment. In other words, if you make it to burn coal so hard or so you put so many regulations on it that people aren't going to use it anymore and the economic growth will slow down, there's this tension. Uh, it's very evident. The last presidential election... President Trump specifically said, I will use more coal in an attempt to gain the votes of people who work in states where coal miners live. In the 1970s, the United States creates the very first law, the U.S. Clean Air Act, 
that actually established levels of pollution. For the first time, we regulated how much coal could be burnt, what type of pollution could come out. Cars had to have exhaust systems that clean their exhaust. Okay, And what we find is that not only are there the economic benefits of coal, but all these things against it, there are costs that go beyond that. Social costs, environmental costs, that are often borne by people who are not the direct users of the coal. So I'm going to pause this video here, and I'm going to have you watch the video called London's Deadly Acid Smog Crisis of 1952. Watch that video, kind of keep in mind, and then we'll come back.